Angels. We all love angels. I remember when I was a child, the beautiful image of a white angel protecting us and the things we hear about angels, it's, uh, which is so uplifting and just makes us feel so soft and embraced by something special. I think there are two types of angels we have to think about. In God's creation of the world, he created myriads of angels with all different types of tasks that they have as God's messengers. And each one has their own purpose of what they are here for. But there's another type of angel. And I think this is really where, where it's very special and for us to, to understand and, and, and know because many angels we create. Every time we do a mitzvah, every time we do something positive, we create a beautiful angel. And every time, unfortunately, we do something negative or wrong, we also create an angel. And the angel is according to our action. We do something good, we create a, a good angel. We do something wrong, we create a negative force. And these become forces that surround us all the time. The angels we create become our aura, become a positive energy. Our sages tell us that one mitzvah brings another mitzvah. One sin brings another sin. And everyone asks, why is that so? Every action is separate. Why if I do a mitzvah, will, will it help me quicker do another mitzvah? And the answer is, when you do a mitzvah, you create an aura, an angel around you. That all of a sudden, it's a good energy that drives you to do something good. Makes it easier for you to do something good. While the opposite, if you, God forbid you do something wrong, the opposite happens. So a lot of angels is what we create around ourselves. And, and what's interesting is, that most people, when they talk about angels, sort of angels are greater than people. And angels are, are, are who we aspire to say, they're so pure and special, we'll never be like an angel, and couldn't I be like an angel? But Judaism teaches us that the opposite. The angels, both those that were created by God before, or those that are created through our actions, are all here to serve us. They wait to get the cue from us. We're the ones who lead and in the path we lead, we're able to create our own angels and bring the other angels that exist to give us power, new strength, a new ability to rise, new energy to be able to go further in our path of life. So we are the center of the universe, us humans. And we are the ones who own our choices, while angels are spiritual robots. They're just there to serve and they're there to help us in our path of life. But I want to end with the beautiful story that happened with the Baal Shem Tov. So one of the students of the Baal Shem Tov, the founder of the Hasidic movement, desired very much that Elijah the prophet, who had turned into an angel, and we know through the centuries and millennium after he passed away, he had come down to many people in the form of an angel and taught them Torah, the secrets of Torah. And it is said that someone who reaches a certain level of purity and righteousness is, is merit, meritorious to have Elijah the prophet come down to them. And this particular disciple of the Baal Shem Tov desired it very much and he read in the books what you have to do, you have to fast for a certain amount of time and other types of things and he did it all and Elijah never showed up. So he goes to his teacher and he says, you know, I'm trying very hard to have that experience of Elijah showing up to me but it's not happening. <clears throat> Elijah's not coming to me. So the Baal Shem Tov told his disciple, you know, as soon as Rosh Hashanah I want you to go to the next town and you'll find a certain family. They live at the edge of the town, they're pretty poor. Make sure you take some food with you because they definitely won't have enough for you. Maybe you'll have a little left over for them. And spend Rosh Hashanah with them. You'll experience Elijah the prophet. And for this disciple it meant a big deal because usually like all the disciples of the Baal Shem Tov, they wanted to be near him on the high holidays. It was the most uplifting experience, and he was going to give it up, but if he gets to see Elijah, it's all worth it. And he goes to the town, he finds the hut, he finds the family, poverty he couldn't imagine. Luckily he had some food and enough that uh, he shared with the family. 
and he had a Rosh Hashanah experience far from the uplifting experience at the Baal Shem Tov's synagogue. And Elijah never showed up to him. So after Rosh Hashanah, he comes running back to the Baal Shem Tov, his, his master, his teacher, and he says, Rebbe, you promised me Elijah the prophet will appear to me, but it didn't happen. So the Baal Shem Tov says, you know what, one more thing. Go back before Yom Kippur. Now you know the poverty of that family. Bring a lot of food. They haven't eaten in days. And then you'll experience Elijah. And he goes, buys a lot of food, goes back. It's Erev Yom Kippur, and he comes to the town, finds the hut again. And as he's about to knock on the door, he hears a conversation from inside the small house. And he hears one of the children crying to his mother, 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 I'm hungry. I need food. I haven't eaten for three days. I can't survive. Mother, please, crying. I need food. And the mother quiets the child and says, My dear son, don't worry. Just like God sent Elijah the prophet to bring us food for Rosh Hashanah, we are sure and believe that God will send Elijah the prophet again to bring us food before the holiday Yom Kippur. And at that moment he had an epiphany and he realized that he, through doing a mitzvah, becomes the embodiment of that angel that he desires to see. So we in Judaism are not looking to become angels. We in Judaism are who angels are searching to cling on to because we can take angels for a ride that they can never have themselves. If you liked that video, hit the subscribe button and notification bell below for hours of the best Jewish content online.